I think the matrix representation of systems is especially useful when you get into bigger systems. Uh, so let's say, I'm going to write small to show you how much little space you could use. Uh, say you have a system now that has four variables and four equations. And I paused my recording because you didn't need to watch me write out the whole system. So we have a system with four equations, and we can represent this as a matrix. We write out our coefficients, 1, 3, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, negative 1, uh, 2, 5, minus 3, minus 1, 4, 12, 2, 1, colons, so we're making an augmented matrix, and then our solutions, 11, 30, minus 5, 9, but on the right-hand side. And working this out, uh, according to the matrix representation, we're still doing the same steps we would do if we were solving it as a system, but it, it's a much more compact way of, of writing out all your operations. So our first step is to make zeros down here. 3, 1, 6 all need to become zeros. So we're taking negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. We're taking row 1 minus row 3. We're taking row 6 times row 1 minus row 4. All right, what does that leave us with? Well, row 1 remains the same. 1, 2, 2, 4, 11. And we have negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. So that's negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is also 0. That's convenient. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 12 plus 12 is also 0. That's extremely convenient. And we get 11. Uh, so negative 33 plus 33 is negative 3. And I would go ahead and we could divide that row by negative 1 to kill off the negatives. All right. Row 1 minus row 3 gives us a 0. Uh, actually, since we want a 1 in our first entry, I'm going to flip my signs here and instead take negative row 1 plus row 3 uh, because then we're taking 3 minus 2 which is 1. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Colon. Negative 5 minus 11 is minus 16. All right. 6 times row 1 minus row 4. 0. 12 minus negative 1. 13, 12 minus negative 1 is still 13, uh, 24 minus 1 is 23, and then 66 minus 9 is 57. All right, uh, at this point, we got some 1s going on here, and uh, they're kind of in handy positions. Um, I, I would, I'm going to go ahead, I want to get this into row echelon form, which means I want 1s on the diagonal, so I would go ahead and swap row 2 and row 3 uh, because then I already have 1's in the correct place in my second and third rows. So row 3 just becomes row 2, row 2 becomes row 3, and row 4 is just chilling there for the moment. Alright, now next up, zoom in a little more, so, oh, that's the wrong way, so you can see. Uh, we want to get rid of this 13, and we can do that by taking negative 13 times row 2 plus row 4. Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same. Row 3 stays the same. And row 4. Negative 13 times 1 plus 13 is 0. 65 plus 13 is 78. Goodness, uh, 26 plus 23 is 49, and negative 13 times 16, uh, that would be 160 plus 48, 208 plus 57 is 265. That is why you have calculators, ladies and gentlemen. All right, then, this is looking kind of ugly, but we can deal with it. We want to get a zero here. So we take minus 78 times row 3 plus row 4. Oh, sorry. 
minus 78 times row 3 plus row 4. So we can recopy the top part of the matrix. And I've got a 1, 2, 2, 4, 1. We've got a 0, 1, minus 5, minus 2, 16. We have uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3. And we have 0, 0. All right. Then we have minus 78 plus 78. So that's another 0 over here. We have 0 plus 49. That's pretty easy to deal with. And we have minus 78 times 3, which would be 210 plus 24 is minus 234. So 65 minus 34 is 31. And here I thought I had made a nice problem that would work out well, but I guess I didn't. Uh, <laughs> so then to complete putting this in row echelon form, we're going to take row 4 divided by 49, which gives us all the same things up top. 0, 1, minus. And down in the bottom row we have 1, and then 31 over 49. Oy. Oy vey. All right. So this bottom equation tells us that z is 31 over 49. Now this equation tells, or no, that's not z, sorry, that's w. This equation tells us that z equals 3, which is nice. This equation tells us that uh, y minus 5 times z minus 2 times w equals 16, and here I'm going to break out my calculator. Uh, we got 5 times 3 plus 2 times 31 over 49, and that's negative on the left side, so when we add it over, it becomes plus six, that plus 16, uh, which is 32 point, lots of junk. So y is... 1581 over 49, and then the top equation, uh, what is happening? And then the top equation tells us that x plus 2y, which is 1581 over 49, plus 2z, which is handily 3, plus 4 times 31 over 49, equals 1, and I'm going to stick that stuff in my calculator, take 1 minus 6 minus 4 times 31 over 49, minus 2 times 1581 over 49, and get that z is minus 72 point a bunch of stuff, which turns out to be minus 3531 over 49. Woo -wee. All right. Well, I, I'm sorry I picked such a nasty system, but hopefully you can see the principle of how we get this system into row echelon form and see how using the matrices here is much more of a compact uh, space-saving representation than using the equations was. I used, you know, I wrote fairly small, but I only used up this much of my paper. Uh, and that's, that's what's really handy about using the matrices. <clears throat> now, row echelon form meant that we had ones along our diagonals, we had zeros all over the place below our diagonal, and then we had stuff up above our diagonal. Right? Now, reduced row echelon form uh, is even more well, it's more reduced. <laughs> there are less numbers in the matrix. What makes it reduced... So a matrix in reduced row echelon form is in row echelon form, but it is also reduced. And what that means, this reduced row echelon form, uh, means that we also have zeros above those diagonal ones, okay? 
So everything above these ones along the diagonal has to be a zero. And then, you know, there can still be other stuff in our matrix, you know, out past that, you know, as long as uh, we've got those ones on the diagonal entries and then zeros above and below those ones, it is in uh, reduced row echelon form. Okay. Um, I'm going to write a couple matrices and once I put them up on the screen, I, I'd like you to uh, pause the video, look at them for a minute, and decide which ones are in uh, row echelon, oops, echelon, reduced row echelon, row echelon form, reduced row echelon form, or neither. I'm going to write a couple matrices. Pause the video, see if you can figure it out, and then uh, I will, you know, tell you what they are and explain why, and hope so you can see how you did, and hopefully uh, get a good handle on on what each form means. All right, so I've made, placed four video for uh, or four matrices here. Uh, go ahead and pause your video and take a second to see if you can figure out uh, which one is which. Um, let's look at this this one first, okay? So, in order to be in row echelon form, uh, I, I, I guess I didn't state it quite clearly before, uh, for which I apologize. The ones don't need to be on the diagonal. What, what needs to happen is that the first entry must be a 1. Okay? Uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be on the diagonal. So this the first entry, well, when I say the first entry, I should say the first non-zero entry. If I look at this matrix, the first non-zero entry in each row is a 1, which means that it is in row echelon form. And the question is, is it in reduced row echelon form? Well, what is the the stipulation for reduced row echelon form. We need to have zeros above those leading entry ones. Well, we have zeros above here, we have zeros above here. So that's fine. There is this 6 and the 4 here, which I was trying to confuse you with. These are not above a leading 1, and so they don't matter <laughs> in terms of figuring out what form the matrix is in. All that matters is that there are these zeros above the 1s. This one, as it turns out, is in reduced row echelon form, okay, which I will abbreviate RREF, reduced row echelon form. All right, this one, first entry, first non-zero entry is one. Okay, I go above my ones, not a zero. That means it is in reduced row, or in row echelon form, but it's not reduced because this entry above the one is not a zero. Look at this one. My first non-zero entry has to be one. One, one, two. No good. It is not row echelon form. First non-zero entry has to be a one. One, one, zeros. Huzzah. And look above my first entry ones. There's something there. So this is row echelon form.